In this section, we're going to look at discounted cash flow analysis in more detail. By analyzing the formula, we can understand what drives the discounted cash flow analysis and how to build it in Excel. For more detail on this, I suggest taking our financial modeling courses, specifically our Fundamentals of Financial Modeling and Building a Financial Model in Excel course, outline in great detail how to build a DCF model from scratch. If we look at an example of a cash flow that occurs in 2018, we have a discount factor and the formula for the discount factor is 1 over 1 plus the rate, which is in this case 10%, to the power of the number of periods, in this case 1. The second cash flow, which occurs in 2019, is also $100, but this time is raised to the power of 2. As you can see at the bottom here, the present value of that number of the 100 is being reduced over time. In 2020, it's raised to the power of 3 and becomes only $75 of present value today from $100 of free cash flow in the future. By 2021, it's worth $68 today. 2022, it's down to 62 and then finally, in a DCF analysis, we have a terminal value. So the first five years were our forecast, a detailed forecast of what we expect cash flow to be over five years. And then we value the business into perpetuity using a terminal value. In this case, we're saying the terminal value of the business is $300 in future cash flow. But raised uh, to the power of five, that's only worth $186 today. So as you can see, the discounted cash flow amount becomes quite big at the end, but the present value is significantly less. So to calculate the entire value of this firm, which is 565, we add up these cash flows in their present value. So $565 million of present value compared to $800 million of future value. Now let's take a look at the cost of capital formula. The cost of capital depends on the capital structure of a business and its level of risk. So a company consists of assets. That's the base of the business. But then it has a capital structure that make up those assets consisting of debt and equity. So we have to take into consideration the percentage of the company's capital that's debt and the percentage that's equity. We multiply each of those by their respective costs and we arrive at the contribution to the cost of capital of each. So to sum them up gives us the total cost of capital. Now let's use a real example with some numbers. Take a company with the following capital structure. Debt is on the top, equity is on the bottom. The proportionate weightings are 14% debt, 86% equity. The cost of debt after tax is 3.5%. The cost of equity is 9%. This company has a weighted average cost of capital of 8.2%. This number is the number that plugs in to the formula we were using on the previous section where we were calculating the present value of a business. So in this case, instead of being 1.1 as in the previous example, it would be 1.082 raised to the power of whatever year or period we're discounting from. Sometimes these concepts can be tricky to grasp on the first pass. I highly recommend looking at our other courses that touch on cost of capital and financial modeling to get more detailed explanations of these concepts.